Say we had a single-sided exponential signal and we were asked for the containment bandwidth or the equivalent bandwidth of that signal. That's like asking for the range of frequencies for which the energy of the signal or 99% of the energy of the signal resides. So because we're being asked for the bandwidth, it means we need to work in the frequency domain. So what we've been given is the time domain signal, x of t, and where we need to operate is in the frequency domain. So what I'll do is I'll... We don't need to do this, but it would help if we had a sketch, even an approximate sketch, of the um, spectrum of the signal. So it will look something like that. Okay, it doesn't really matter what the shape is, but this is what um, the Fourier transform of a single-sided exponential looks like. So let's just annotate the axes. Here you have frequency omega, and what we're actually after is th sorry, this value here. So we're looking for some value omega where the energy of the signal between minus omega and omega is 99% of the energy of the total signal. So we can start with the Fourier transform pair where the single-sided exponential we're given can be represented as 1 over a plus j omega. And that is helpful because we can say that the energy inside some um, frequency range omega using Parseval theorem is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Well, actually, I'll remove the pi for a second, and here I can just say x of omega squared d omega. And that I can replace with 1 over a plus j omega. But we know that the modulus of 1 over j plus omega is um, 1 over a squared plus omega squared, or you can find that easily. We've done that several times before. So using that, we simply put that into there. So we can then say ex is 1 over 2 pi, the integral of 1 over a squared plus omega squared, d omega. Now, I can, if I change my limits from minus omega to omega, this becomes the energy that I'm interested in. That is this energy here within the 99% containment bandwidth. Now, this is a standard integral for which we can use a standard result. So we're allowed to use the result that this is 1 over a tan inverse omega over a between minus omega and omega. And if we substitute the limits, so that's 1 over 2 pi a into the inverse tangent of omega, or I should say uppercase omega over a minus tan inverse minus omega over a. Now, because um, the tangent function is odd, so tan x is odd, that allows me to um, add these together and cancel the two. So the answer is 1 over pi a times the inverse tangent of omega over a. 
So that's the energy contained within that frequency range. Now, it still hasn't answered the question, because the question is, what's the 99% containment bandwidth? So the question is, what's the value of omega? The question is, how much is omega? What's that value? So we still need to do a little bit of work. So we can now say, well, if you do the same integration, if you, if you repeat this, but substitute limits of plus and minus infinity, you'll find the total energy in the signal is 1 over 2a. Okay, so that's just using... And again, we've done this before. So for the 99% uh, bandwidth, what we'd say is that the ratio of the two energies should be 99%. So that's 1 over pi a tan inverse omega over a divided by 1 over 2a. And the question, remember, is find that. That's the only unknown. So finding omega in terms of a. So I can rearrange and say um, 0 0.99 equals the a will cancel with the a. So we'll have 2 over pi tan inverse of pi over a. So this is the equation you'd need to solve to find the 99% um, containment bandwidth. Now, obviously, without a value for pi, we can't do that. Sorry, without a value for a, we can't do that because in the question, a is not given. But if it were given, you could find, you could take the tangent of both sides and rearrange to solve for, uh, to solve for omega. So once you've found omega, if, that would be in radians per second. Typically, we would be looking for the containment bandwidth in hertz. So you would take omega and divide by 2 pi. And that, that would be your final answer. So what we've just found was the 99% containment bandwidth. And it could have been the 95% containment bandwidth or the 90% containment bandwidth. But the approach is always the same. You start with your signal in the time domain, convert it to the frequency domain, then use Parseval's theorem to integrate between both minus infinity and infinity and between minus omega and omega, and then um, find the ratio of the two, and then simplify and solve for omega. So that's the result for the single-sided exponential function. Even though we don't know the value for a, we can still solve to find omega. So we can rearrange, so tan inverse omega over a equals 0 0.99 pi over 2, and therefore omega equals a tan 0 0.99 pi over 2. So I just took tan of both sides. Now, we can actually calculate this, but to do that, you need to make sure that your calculator is in radians. Otherwise, um, your result will be meaningless. Okay, so you've got the pi there, so everything you calculate needs to be in radians. So if we just put that in the calculator, you end up with 63.7a. So see, it's still in terms of a, because a is, is not given in the question. And that will be in radians per second. And if we wanted to find that in um, hertz, because typically that's what we're looking for, the containment bandwidth in hertz, we would take 
omega and divide by 2 pi. So that will give us 10.1 hertz. So what we've just found is the 99% containment bandwidth for the single-sided exponential function. Okay, um, We did that by finding the frequency domain representation of x of t, and we started with a given Fourier pair. We then found the energy of the signal, and we found the energy between minus omega and plus omega. We found the ratio of those two energies. We equated that to 0 0.99, and then we solved for that. Now, if the question had asked for the 90% um, uh, containment bandwidth for the 95%, we could have put 90 in here. We could have put 95 in here. Okay, so um, the, uh, the way we solved it doesn't depend on what the percentage is. It's, it's the same method. And typically, you would want your results in hertz. Okay? So, uh, radians per second is a necessary first step, but typically, you'd want your results in hertz. So, that is your final answer.